Okay, this uh, apparently is part seven. <laughs> I, last time I said it was part five and it was part six, but you know, uh, I need to write things down or I get confused. Now, what I'm doing here, this is the chimp mold. And uh, before I can run rubber, uh, and I see a big bubble in the darn ear, which I'll have to fix. But I wanna pull this out first, uh, a little powder to keep it from sticking to itself which latex likes to do. It's like a contact cement if you're not careful. So I'm gonna pull the chimp mask out of the mold very carefully. This mold is starting to go bye-bye and that means that I need to make a new mold again. So thanks for helping me wear these things out. You can see uh, how they come out of the mold. Now, uh, there we have, uh, there we go. And I had a couple bubbles there. Rubber's getting thick and old, I need to get a new batch. But uh, they come out like so. And this one has damage in the mold to the nose, but it's very easily fixed uh, after the fact. But I am definitely gonna have to make a new uh, mold. So I have to pour one more of these today. And this is the plaster mold. But what you wanna see is the gorilla. So, because that's what we've been doing. Uh, and for the first one, I've got a little bit of bubble action here uh, in a place that really doesn't matter a whole lot uh, because it's covered with hair. So what I'm going to do is take a little water-based clay just so I can get one of these poured up. And that spot there looks like a damaged area. I'm going to find out if it is or not. I'm pressing clay into the mold. No, it's fine. It's just a discoloration. In fact, remember I talked about sculpting backwards? Well, this is water-based clay, and this is how you do that. Push it into the mold like so. So if I wanted to check the brow, there's the brow. And I can look at it and I say, all the details there, everything's fine. So with that said, and without further ado, Water-based clay is very absorbent. It will absorb uh, moisture very much like uh, a plaster or the UltraCal in this case. Now I'm just gonna fill in that bubble like so, we are done. Now the rest of the bubbles and trouble areas I will find after I make a, a, a slosh cast in here, uh, it'll tell me everything I need to know. Like I'm seeing up here in the ears, a little clay I still need to get rid of, but also also the um, latex will pull that out in short order. Uh, I'm still gonna try to get it out of the mold. Right, it's Vaseline on it, I don't want that. Let's see if I can get that out. I was sure I had all this out of the mold. Famous last words. Hmm. Interesting. There, there, I, now I can see, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So the first one's going to have a little clay stuck to the rubber. Tell that right now, just looking at it. But not too bad. And again, these ears are almost not even visible, so... I need my popsicle stick. So I'm just going to clean this out as best I can, get the rest of the clay out of here, and then we're going to pour some latex in here. This here seems to be very clean. Oh, there's a little bit right there. I was so sure Friday this was ready to go. Now the surface of the material is very hard now, because it's had all weekend to sit around and dry out a bit. <laughs> Not as much as I need it to, but when 
when you do molds like this, cast these up, slosh pour them, um, even if they're not all the way dry, they tend to thicken up the rubber really quick on the surface. We'll find out. The rest of it looks pretty good. So let's pour some rubber in it. I know you want to see that. If you're new, and a lot of you are, I'm finding, you've never seen this stuff done before. Well, it's been, we've been doing this for years. Five gallons of latex in a bucket that isn't five gallons anymore. So I'm going to pour the latex in. And this is slip casting latex for making masks which you can get in a number of places, but I get mine at Berman's. I happen to like their rubber the very best. I don't know where they get it from. I don't care. They're my friends. I've been buying from them for years. Since Sandy Berman started Berman Industries, oh, geez, back in the early 2000s. And Sandy Berman is a wonderful human being, and I really miss her. She used to come to our parties here. Our parties were amazing. We had all kinds of people here that uh, worked in Star Trek, uh, like DC Fontana, more than once. She would always come to my parties. She loved coming to my parties, and we loved having her. Miss her, too. Uh, I'm seeing lots of bubbles trying to happen. So, And of course, whenever I do this work, my nose runs. It, gross as it is, that's what happens. I'm going to pour this out, and uh, we're going to pop those bubbles. So a little compressed air, even uh, a, uh, a canned air will work. And for some reason that I can't explain, a whole bunch of hair shot out of this and got into the rubber. which really sucks. I go in the ears especially, because that'll blow it up. Ha! This is why you wear crappy clothes when you do this work. Now the hair will be part of the, <laughs> of the mask, so it's, and you'll never see it once it's painted, but I got latex in my hair by doing it. Now I'm gonna pour it up again, Come on, there we go. I'm going to fill it up almost all the way until it's all running on the floor because I didn't see that. Oh, geez, you guys. Getting old is a... Oh, so, <laughs> ah, I just love it. You know, the stuff's liquid gold. Here's a sort of spatula. Want not, waste not, as the saying would go. So when you pour rubber on the floor, just remember to take something like this <laughs> and scoop it up. And it will just dry and peel off the, the part that stayed on the floor. But I guarantee you, on the surface of this mass, there will be very few bubbles the way I did that. It's already coagulating. Oh, that's right. Drop it on your foot. I'm wearing, you'll notice that I, I dress like a homeless person when I do this work. And if you don't dress that way, you'll look like one soon. I remember I, I had to go out for lunch and go into the store, and I needed a special salad dressing. I think it was for making coleslaw. And <laughs> I, uh, I go in the store. And this guy, uh, I, I walk over to this guy working in the store, and he kind of looks at me funny. I didn't think much of it. And I said, I need to get some, um, some salad dressing for coleslaw. And he said, well, sir, it's over here. And as he led me over to it, he says, now, I warn you, it's very expensive. <laughs> 
And I just sort of realized, oh yeah, I, I, I got rubber all over me and plaster and everything else. And to him, it just looks like dirt, you know? The guy has no money, he's poor, he's probably living under a bridge somewhere. So <laughs> that always cracked me up. So that's what we do in a long, about convoluted way of telling you. Um, and so we're going to let this uh, set for, let's see, it's uh, quarter after 12 now, quarter after one. After lunch, I'll pour it out. And it should be fairly thick if I let it sit that long, even though the mold's still green. Uh, and after I pour it out, um, I let it gel overnight. And then it's like the mask you saw pulled out. I mean, the next, next night, you've got this, the next morning, I mean you have this and it's all just dry and in the mold. So, uh, and then you open it up and we'll be able to see what it looks like. Uh, with any luck, we'll be able to uh, maybe even paint it, which would be kind of cool. I'm gonna find out if the teeth fit in there uh, that I already have and if they'll work. I'm pretty sure the teeth were kind of universal. Uh, and that's it, that's it for this part. You got a short one this time because this step is pretty short, pouring the rubber. You got to learn how to pour it in the mold, how to get rid of the bubbles, because it, you will see bubbles and you just like that, it pops and then you want that first sloshing of rubber in there to be uh, bubble free. That, that's your surface coat. And then you put in the rest on top of it and pretty much you'll have a bubble free mask, although I've never had one that was 100% bubble free. Uh, and that's what Prosaid and Cabasil is for. We call it Bondo. You mix Prosaid, uh, prosthetic uh, glue essentially, uh, which is a white material, with uh, powdered glass, which is what Cabasil is, and you get this nice paste. And you can fill in the bubbles, you can fill in deformities. Take your finger like that, go over it, smooth it with, with spit or whatever you want to use, and you can actually kind of sculpt it and stuff. So you can repair stuff. You don't have to throw it away because it's got a bubble in it. And we do that all the time. And since I believe Prosade is an acrylic base, it lasts for a very, very long time, probably longer than the rubber. But I have masks that are from the 90s. I've had people send me pictures of masks from the 90s that they still have. And because they took good care of them, because I cast them thick enough, uh, they're still okay all these years later. So uh, to those of you that say, uh, and I've seen you say it uh, on the forums and, and on Facebook, I'm not paying that kind of money for a right latex mask that's going to rot one day anyway. Well, let me tell you something, everything rots. Um, silicone may last longer. I'm watching a Moonwatcher mask I made almost four or five years ago now for both Adam and for me that have silicone instead of foam rubber, and they're still fine. But I have silicone pieces around here that are much, much older, and they're starting to get kind of gooey and they're kind of like, mm, yeah, they're not what they used to be. So silicone, yeah, it's, it's good, it's very expensive, but it doesn't last necessarily longer than latex. It's all about how you store things, how you take care of them, keeping them out of the sun, keep them out of ozone, don't have ozone generators in your house, those things are nasty anyway, and all they do is rot everything that's made out of natural rubber. And I think maybe even vinyl, I don't know. Vinyl is another thing they made masks of for a while because they were looking for a way to make masks that would last longer because people didn't know how to take care of latex masks. And most of the mask companies made them very thin, so they did the vinyl masks. But the vinyl rots too. So not unless they're made out of stone or resin, or epoxy, it's not going to last. So I've gone back to, after trying all kinds of different things, latex, because of how long masks and busts I've made out of really thick latex have lasted. And I mean, they, they're, they're just lasting and lasting. So sorry for the lecture, but that's what I'm told. So yeah, if you don't want to buy something, uh, my masks are expensive. Yes, I hand sculpt them. I hand make them. I don't have mass produced in China. They're made out of thick rubber. I buy locally. I do not pay wholesale prices for it. I pay the same price that every makeup artist and effects artist pays for in town when they go into Berman's or anywhere else and they purchase five gallons of rubber. If five gallons of rubber is, you know, close to $200 now. And you don't get as many masks out of it as you think you would. Not if you make them thick, so they'll last long. Um, 
And then there's the paint. Uh, the paint I use, a quart, is $40. Now I can paint quite a few masks with it, but not as many as you'd think. So, you know, you're talking about a few bucks worth of paint on every mask, but this paint seals off the rubber so well and it further extends the life of it because it keeps the, the air from rotting away its surface. Then there's the hair. And crepe hair, I use crepe hair, uh, crepe wool. It's not cheap and it's not getting any cheaper and it's all hand laid and all done with care and love and every one of them's hand painted, airbrushed by me. So yeah, you're gonna pay more money than you do from something from Monsters in Motion who has their stuff made over uh, probably mass produced in China. I mean, they have a Baylock. I have a Baylock. I happen to think my Baylock blows theirs away. It costs more money, but it looks exactly like what was in Star Trek. And that's what I'm trying to give you are things that, that replicate the actual prop, the actual mass, the actual creature as it was seen and how it was made in those shows we all know and love. So I hope that, and I know many of you do appreciate that. To the people who don't, you know, I can't help that. So, and again, thanks for the dislikes. I, I got some more the other day and uh, all that does on, on, on uh, YouTube is attract more viewers. So, Oh, every time you think it's hurting me, it's not. It's helping me, and I have to thank you for it. And you're entitled to not like things I do. I don't like things a lot of people do that I find on the Internet. But I don't give them a thumbs down, and I don't comment and say, you know, that was awful, or, gee, you know, that, that could have been better, or you have a lot to learn, or anything mean like that. We don't need people to be mean. We've had enough of that in the world, and I refuse to be part of it, so... So I don't uh, approve comments, not that I've gotten any lately that were bad, that I didn't approve. I've approved every single comment so far that has been uh, posted in my held for review because you are so kind, so thoughtful, and so wonderful. And thank you. I appreciate it a great deal. We'll see you uh, for part eight <laughs> tomorrow when we pull the thing out of the mold, okay? We'll see you then.